Hello and welcome to my second part in my tutorials for beginners. The first parts are there to make you familiar with the central elements and in the first part it was the blue scale, including playing the blue scale freely um, over two octaves together with the left hand. Uh, today I will show you the second most important element that are chord structures in the right hand and in the end we want to join those elements and play licks and in these licks will always be these central elements that's why I'm teaching you them. Now we start with this little figure and all of those three ones are very very important and you will meet them again very often more often than your own relatives maybe so we have it starts with the C major chord course and if you play this figure also you must uh, take care of the finger setting it's one two three four and one two three four <laughs> it's one two three and then we go to this now what is this actually this is um it's a, actually an inversion of F, but it's passing. <coughs> it's passing from this C to the C7 here, so it's just recognized as a passing chord. It does not deserve an own uh, chord um, sign. So we are always staying in C here. So it's the C. Then we have this little fella as a passing chord. You can always think of it as the F inversion, if it is easier for you. And then you go to the C7. We just skip this one from the C7 because we, are, we have three voices and we stay with three voices. It sounds better than we change the number of voices all the time, so we keep this one off. Your first task is then now. Here again, in the, uh, in the beginning, you have to make sure that the left hand is keeping its pattern at all times. Okay. The next step then would be to play this in F. It's the same finger setting. Now we have the, it's an inversion of the B flat. Again, one, two, three, finger setting one, two, four, and so that we can tie to one, three, five on F7, leaving out the major third of F7. And then on the dominant, we do the same. We have the G. We have quickly same inversion of, so we have G, G7, quick inversion of C, and then the G7, without the major third here. Learn these by heart, just practicing them dry without the left hand so that you get familiar, especially since your fingers don't like these things, you know, like lifting here and then going up with these two and then going up with these. So it's a really good exercise. Uh, you can also just raise the fingers so that you get used to it. In classical training it was always part of the exercise to raise the fingers so that these muscles know what to do very clearly instead of just sticking here and then playing muddy like uh, so it's a really good exercise also for these pair of twos here high and then down to get your fingers uh, to increase your fingers mobility same here So at the end of this, you should be able to play this. Play the four bars then. And back and that along the blues form. Okay, you got to really internalize that before we can go on.
now we'll do something that we will in the end do with all these basic elements. We learn a couple of variations and learn to treat this as something that can be molded in many ways. Uh, we start with a little rhythmical um, change and we play this here. You see there's one coming in between. One and two and three. This is called a syncopation. It's uh, because it's played on the and. One and two and three. And the next downbeat is left empty. So it feels like the accent is on the offbeat, on the and. And that's what we call a syncopation. So again, now let's add a little counting that is important and my students here don't get away uh, without having to count and to learn to count because then later on you will find the rhythmical spots much easier because my experience is when students learn on their own they get that very wrong and they believe they are right but if you count you have a self-control because you say it loudly and then you will see where, where it's not working, where you are cheating. This is a good example. One and two and three. You see we have the one and two. Remember always one and two. Which one is coming on the A here? One and two and now you might have difficulty in playing this goes down while this is repeating another A. Look again. One and two and three. You see? And this is, uh, during the first time, this is will be one of your typical problems to get this together. That one goes down while the other one is still on the A, for example. And it's going down on the end. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. It's really um, necessary that you count aloud with your voice in the room because if you count in your head um, silently, you will cheat. I promise you, I've experienced that so many times. So. Counting loud is of the essence. Then you do the same on one and two and three and four and. Now you will see you will have only two bars on the F. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. And then you go on to see one and two four and so this was one bar next bar then we have this the G bar and two C bars in the end okay now you do the same in the other way you do it like this same counting one and two Same as a syncopation and you play the, instead of going back down here, you go up to our third third. Remember we have these three thirds, they're all thirds. Now one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and you got it? So this is now um, changing the direction a little bit. All this will cause your brain to learn, to go into different direction uh, with the hands and to get to learn these uh, intervals here in the fingers. Play them clearly. The clearer you play, um, the more your fingers will learn them. And also, um, maybe in the beginning, play them overtly um, strong, like, this way, you're 
fingers will also get a little bit more strength, okay? And if you play it with confidence, um, that's also good because then you're sure and you're in control. Uh, so many students just play like, mm, 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 and then they are uh, in danger of doing mistakes because they, they don't know exactly and they, is it right? But if you play like, zack, yes, I know it. So I can play it strongly with confidence. Play it like this. And then. So this was, would be the uh, last exercise in with this pattern. So it's one and two and three and four and one. So we go all the way up and all the way down this little ladder. So once again, there's one more syncopation. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and and you leave you can leave a bar empty after that so we have each of those is two bars then one and two and three one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four is two bars one and play it again one and two and three and four and so we have four bars then playing this pattern leaving one bar empty and on G we have to shorten it a little bit we do one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and why because we just have one bar and at the end of the bars it's getting too close for you okay so just play that part of the pattern and then in the end you can do again one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and chorus is done perfect you arrived safely and then you start from the top then a bit later we have something like a turnaround that is indicating that you're actually going back to the top but not for now okay Get this into your hands, stay safe, have a wonderful weekend, and uh, well, have anything wonderful if you like. All the best from Berlin.